in this video. This is T's workbook hence video number three and we're going to solve some quadratic equations using the square root method. These hints are actual examples that I'm doing here. This is an update that I did make to the T's math workbook and you can find a link to that workbook in the description below. Version 1.3 is the most up-to-date version and I did add some quadratic equations that we can solve using the square root method. You can find this in the equation section of the T's math workbook. Number one, x squared equals 100. A quadratic equation will have an exponent of two. And oftentimes this can lead to two solutions. Let's look at this problem here. You wanna take a number and square it. For example, if I took four squared, that is 16. Six squared is 36. So think about this, four squared means four times four. That's why four squared is 16. Six squared is 36 because six times six is 36. So you may be thinking, oh, okay, I got this. Yeah, X squared, take 10 and square. 10 times 10 is 100. So you may be thinking, all right, our answer is 10. And that is correct, but technically there's two answers. 10 times 10 gives you 100, but also negative 10 will work as well. If you take negative 10 and square it, negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. So a way we can commonly write this answer is x equals plus or minus 10. We have two answers here and you can always check your work by plugging these numbers back in. Positive 10, 10 squared equals 100. Negative 10, well if you take negative 10 and you square it, negative 10 times negative 10 is 100. And to emphasize the square root method, what does the square root method really mean? Well, technically what I'm doing here to get x by itself is I'm taking the square root of x squared. The inverse operation of squaring something is to take the square root. And bearing that in mind, that's why this is called the square root method. Now in number two, we want to use all of our skills for solving equations. We want to apply those to quadratic equations. So just like basic equations, you want to get x by itself. Let's move the 7 over. We're trying to get the x squared by itself. So the 7's cancel out over here, and we have x squared is equal to 64. Now, to get x by itself, here is the square root method. We take the square root of whatever is getting squared. In this case, the square root of x squared is going to be x. And the square root of 64, you may be thinking, oh, it's 8 but technically it's plus or minus eight. Let's go back and check that real quick to verify that. I'm gonna just take away this slash here so we can see the problem. Let's take positive eight and let's plug it in. Eight times eight, that's what eight squared means. That is 64 and 64 minus seven is 57. Very good. Negative eight, let's plug that in. Negative eight squared means negative eight times negative eight and that is 64. 64 minus seven gives you 57. So looking at these two examples here, you may be thinking, oh, it's always gonna be plus or minus some number, and that is not the case. Now this example here is a little bit tougher. Uh, we got five times some stuff, and all of this stuff is getting squared, and we want it to be equal to 1,125. So five times some junk squared. Well, if five is getting multiplied by all of this stuff, we can actually divide by five. That's the inverse operation of multiplication, right? So five times some junk squared divided by five, we can cancel the fives out. Therefore, we now have two X plus three, all of that squared is equal to 1,125 divided by five, that is going to be 225. All right, so that's one tough spot. Now here's the next tough spot. We want to take the square root here. We are using the square root method, and notice, we're trying to get x by itself, but x is wrapped up inside of parentheses, and all of this stuff is getting squared. This is the step where you want to take the square root. We're trying to get rid of the squared. The opposite of squaring some stuff is to take the square root of that stuff. So let's take the square root of both sides, and when you take the square root of 2x plus 3, all of this squared, you're left with 2x plus 3. The square root and the square cancel each other out. And over here, the square root of 225, we actually need plus or minus 15. 
Taken into consideration like we did the square root of 100 was plus or minus 10. The square root of 64 was plus or minus 8. So the square root of 225 is plus or minus 15. So that's a second step that can be a little bit tricky there. Now the third step. I mentioned a while ago that you know you can't assume that it's always going to be plus or minus the same number. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break this up into two equations. 2x plus 3, we're saying that it can be equal to plus or minus 15. So I'm going to set 2x plus 3 equal to positive 15 and 2x plus 3 equal to negative 15. Now we can solve these two equations just like basic equations by getting x by itself. So let's subtract 3 from both sides. That leaves us with 2x is equal to 12. The 3's cancel out there. Divide both sides by 2, and we get a final answer here of x equals 6. And of course, you know, I, sometimes I will forget to cancel things out, but you don't have to do that. But I'm just trying to show you here that we did get x by itself. Let's go ahead and solve this one, and then we'll check both of these answers as well. So subtracting 3 again from both sides, that leaves us with 2x is equal to, watch your signs here, negative 18. Dividing both sides by 2, and we get x is equal to a negative 9. So notice we don't get plus or minus 6 or plus or minus 9. We actually get a positive 6 for one of our answers, or we get a negative 9 for one of our answers. Let's go back and check this. And to assist with that, I'm going to write down the original problem was 5 times 2x plus 3 all squared is equal to 1,125. Let's plug 6 in first. Now we have to work inside parentheses, order of operations. So 2 times 6, that gives us 12. 12 plus 3 gives us 15. Now we want to square the 15. 15 squared is 225. And then if we multiply that by 5, we do get 1,125. And hopefully you can kind of see as we're checking things, we're kind of getting these same numbers popping up, right? You know, the 15 and we squared. And yeah, I mean, we're just basically checking our work, which is really reversing this process. Let's check the negative 9. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. Plus 3 is negative 15. When you square negative 15, you get 225. Multiplying that by 5, we do get 1,125. And there you have it, three examples of solving quadratic equations using the square root method. You can find even more examples in the T's Math Workbook. And again, you can find a link to that in the description below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.